Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how we can build a Windows 8.1 app using TypeScript, JavaScript, having custom fonts, doing search, laying things out using Bootstrap, data binding using AngularJS, underscore, a sprinkle of jQuery, and something called Banker's Box. Let's get started and let me show you the final app we're going to be building. So this is Visual Studio 2013. I'm going to launch the app. And you can see that custom font right there, that search box. We search for banana yogurt. And you can see, again, the custom font image is laid out. And if we click on the URL, you're going to see IE opening up side by side. And you can actually fully use the browser in that context. So you have two apps running on the same screen. And by using TypeScript, you get statement completion and design time type checking. The cool thing about TypeScript is that you will find community-driven type information for the top popular open source projects. We'll also need Visual Studio 2013, so grab a version of that. And we'll also need Windows 8.1, so you'll need that installed as well. So let's start out by starting fresh and launching Visual Studio for the first time, creating a new project. And it's going to be a Windows Store JavaScript-based blank app. Let's call it Ingredi Meals. Okay, so this is the default HTML. This is what you'll see when you first launch the app. So let's do that. And that's the basic kind of template that you get out of the box. So let's start by modifying what we're getting out of the box. So let's start by launching Blend and changing the design of the default template. So we're going to be adding some markup for the app. And you'll see an app container div there. And let's add a title saying Ready Meals and add a search text box along with a search button. And we'll build a container for the results that will overflow and allow us to scroll through it, giving it a height just so we can kind of make this quick and easy. We'll move the app a bit to the right so things look a bit better. And we want to add a custom font. So let's grab a font that I like. Extract the files and add that font to my project. So we'll make a fonts folder. And copy the font to that folder. Now in my design, I'm going to define that font and make it accessible for my app. So this is just CSS and we'll be adding that custom font. Open type and use that in that custom H1 class. So let's see how that goes and let's run our new app. And there you go. You have a custom font being used in our app. Fantastic. Let's reload and we can now see the changes even in the designer. So the next step for us is to add some app logic. So we'll make a new app.js JavaScript file. And a app.ts JavaScript file. These two files are going to be linked. And make sure you have automatic compilation turned on. So let's start typing some TypeScript. And we're defining a class. Now, this is not JavaScript, right? This is TypeScript. And the fun thing that TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So everything JavaScript is actually already TypeScript. And you can use whatever code you have. And TypeScript will work just fine with it. When you save a TypeScript file, it compiles down to JavaScript. And you can see the output right here. It's idiomatic JavaScript. So it should look quite similar to your TypeScript. And we get the benefits of smart completions and design time type checking. So I'll add a constructor that parses that JSON and saves it locally inside that class. So I'll write a function get recipes for ingredients. And it doesn't take any parameters, but it returns an array of any, meaning that we don't know the type of these objects at design time. Now, the cool thing that you notice is that while I didn't return something from that method, Visual Studio will tell me that there's an issue with my code right now because there's nothing being returned from that method. So that type of power you get because of TypeScript. 
So let's return just an empty thing to keep our syntax correct and add a bit of code so we can actually call that method and pass on a valid call. Now we want to load the JSON, but we want to do it asynchronously. So we're going to use the WinJS pattern for running asynchronous JavaScript code, and we're going to pass it a database for recipes. Now, no magic. We're getting an open source recipe database from GitHub, and you can grab it too. Um, the only difference from this version and that version is that we cleaned up a bit of the data uh, and made it smaller because the data needs to actually be valid JSON. So we're going to add another folder and call that DB, and we're going to copy that database or a subset of the database into our project. We're going to reference it. And once you get that file, get its contents and pass it to that method in app.js. And to do that, we first have to reference app.js. Notice that we're passing the JavaScript, not the TypeScript. The TypeScript goes away once you compile. So let's instantiate a recipes database or DB and pass it the content of the JSON file we just loaded asynchronously. We'll define an onClick behavior, which will call that object on get recipes for ingredients method and pass it nothing for now. We'll place that breakpoint on recipes and run the app. So let's click that search button and you'll see the debugger break. And you can look at the contents of this.recipe.json, which has all of our recipes. So now let's take a couple of recipes and visualize those. So we'll prepare an array of recipes and store a couple in that array. Now here, here's a very important note. If you do wind up for whatever reason, editing the JavaScript file, remember that the JavaScript file is dynamically generated. So you want to copy these changes back in the TypeScript file. Now, normally, if you're debugging the TypeScript file, you wouldn't have to do this step. But sometimes, for whatever reason, if you're using a preview version, or if you jumped into the JavaScript file to debug that directly, make sure that you copy them back into the TypeScript file. And you'll notice that once we save, TypeScript compiles our updated code into JavaScript. And we can run the app, and the debugger will break on that return recipes line. And we can see that we have two items, two recipes in that array that we'll be returning to default.html. Next, we want to get some data binding going on. So let's look for AngularJS. And this is a popular library, which you can get. It's open source. Just save it and get that JavaScript ready for insertion. We'll add an existing item find that JS and add it to our project. One thing that's important to know about Windows 8 is that it hardened the security model around JavaScript. So JavaScript libraries need to adhere to these concepts. Now jQuery 2.0 plus already supports that. Angular JS at the moment doesn't. So we're going to go into that JavaScript and modify it a bit. We're going to look for inner HTML calls and wrap it with that specific function that Microsoft provides you with saying, I know that code is safe, so I'm going to just let it run. We're going to do that around different portions of the code, and you can just look for pens or inner HTML, and you can read a lot about this online. And let's jump back to the app.ts and create an app controller for AngularJS. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that the MVVM model AngularJS uses fits really, really well with the concept of classes that TypeScript has. And let's reference AngularJS in the default.html file. So we'll add a constructor and we'll pass it AngularJS's scope. And again, this is AngularJS specific stuff, so go ahead and learn about that. And we'll create a function called update stuff that will call out to our recipes DB. Now, if there's a JavaScript object that TypeScript doesn't know about, you can just declare that it exists and give it a type. And the TypeScript code will assume that it will be passed on in runtime. And now that TypeScript knows about DB and its type recipes DB, it knows that we can call its get recipes for ingredients method. And once we get the result back for whatever recipes we get back, we can assign it to the AngularJS scope under recipes found. Back to the controller, we'll define a method under the AngularJS scope that calls the update stuff method we've defined in the app controller class. 
Now we can add some AngularJS magic to our HTML. And if you want full IntelliSense for AngularJS, you can visit Mads Christensen's website and actually download a library that enables that in Visual Studio. We'll define ng-controller to be app controller to link and let Ang AngularJS know that the application will be using app controller as its model. And we'll want to get jQuery to do the last step. So I want to show you one more integration point that Visual Studio excels in, and that's NuGet integration. You can quickly grab tons of the awesome open source libraries and various NuGet packages and TypeScript type definitions straight from within Visual Studio. Once we have jQuery installed, we can drop it off inside our HTML. And, and now we have jQuery as part of our project. And we're going to go ahead and initialize AngularJS by writing that piece of code. Now, instead of the onClick behavior, we want to do this the AngularJS way. So we're going to add an ng-click behavior. And we're going to call vm.update stuff. Again, this might seem a bit unusual. That's AngularJS stuff. So go ahead and read more about that. Now we'll define a repeating block of HTML, which is going to be powered by AngularJS. And what this means is that for every recipe in recipes found in the data model that we've defined, we'll be able to pull that data and use that within the template we're defining. So let's see if that'll work now. We'll click on local machine, click search, and voila, we have the name of the recipe, the URL, and the image. So this looks a bit basic. We'll go ahead and throw a few more random recipes into the mix. And now we see that we get a longer list of recipes and we can scroll around and this will obviously work with touch as well. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to lay things out a bit better. And again, the goal isn't to show you design or a wonderful app experience, but to actually show you how you can use so much of the rich open source libraries and your existing skills when it comes to design and laying out and building great JavaScript apps within Windows 8.1. We're going to go ahead and get Bootstrap and install it using NuGet. That quick, that easy. And reference the CSS in my project. So we're going to drag and drop that in and we have bootstrap running. Now I've placed it on top of the windows specific controls. So windows can still overwrite some of the CSS just for the sake of, you know, getting up and running fast. And in my spans, I'm going to use bootstrap columns to lay things out a bit differently. I'm going to move around my template a bit to make it look better. I'm going to use a span five here and a span four here for the image. Click on search and we just laid things out a bit differently. Fantastic. Now I want to use that custom font for my results as well. So let's add some inline style for that span and have it use that same custom font. And once we run the app, you'll see that once we search, we get that custom font already running. Now, now one of the best features of Windows 8.1 is that you can actually open two apps side by side. So when clicking that URL, you'll see a full browser being open side by side. Okay. Now to implement real search, we want each recipe to have a list of the ingredients it requires. So I'm not going to get into details on what this exactly does, but it's basically taking that JSON file and looking for each and every ingredient for each and every recipe and building this map that we can reuse later. there's a compilation error there. And that's because TypeScript understands the type of that variable. And it can actually realize that that doesn't make sense in that context. So we can now in design time surface these types of issues. And that will help me avoid bugs right in design time. I'm going to rush through the rest of the code. But if you do want to understand each and every bit that's happening here, just put a breakpoint and start walking through the code. And I promise you there's no magic here. It's just string manipulation and building the map. Next ahead, I'm going to get a library called Bankers Box, which will help me do redis-like operations on sets. I want to use this to be able to do intersections of ingredients and help me build a better search system. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to filter around my sets. And for that, if you're used to link on .NET, underscore .js is very similar. So we're going to grab that. I'm going to reference both bankers box and underscore. And the fun thing is that I'm going to get some typed information for underscore.js, which will allow me to have a fully typed experience with an open source library. 
Now, the way that app.ts will know about the type information we're supplying, we use this notion of comment referencing. So now my app.ts file knows about my underscore type information. Now let's get the search terms that the user typed inside that search box. And we're going to use jQuery again. You'll notice that app.ts doesn't know what the dollar sign is because we haven't declared that in this scope. Now the way for app.ts to know that we have jQuery running is by declaring that dollar sign object. Now, when I added the underscore definition data, my app.ts now understands that we have underscore in that file and we get full and accurate intelligence information for, for instance, in this case, the map function or the pluck function. And that's huge for productivity. Now I'm going to use underscores intersection function and I'm going to use pluck and you can see how all of these methods have fantastic completion because of the typed information. So now we're searching for all of the recipes that have all of the ingredients that the user supplied in them and we're doing that using the intersection function that Bankersbox has. So let's remove that dummy information that we had from before and actually return the right object, the object that has the recipes that intersect and let's run our new app. We'll write down some ingredients like banana yogurt, press search, and voila, we have recipes that have both banana and yogurt in them laid out using Bootstrap, data bound using AngularJS, some custom fonts, filtering and search using Bankersbox and underscore, some jQuery, and a whole lot of TypeScript. I hope you enjoyed this. This has been long, but this should give you an idea on how powerful TypeScript is, especially when coupled with Visual Studio. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this. Follow me on Twitter and ask any questions you want. And see you next time.